Okay, I'm presenting uh, about site-specific nutrient management as a climate-smart agriculture practice on behalf of the whole bunch of author here representing various organizations here. This is the outline of my presentation. Uh, I will start my presentation by presenting the challenges of agriculture and expected increase in the consumption of fertilizer input in agriculture in future. Then I'll present nutrient use efficiency and nutrient balances in different parts of the world in the agroecosystem. Uh, I'll then introduce the concept of site-specific nutrient management, present the benefit of SSNM along with the tools and techniques to implement SSNM. Then I will wind up my presentation by presenting some barriers and ways to uh, respond those barriers for upscaling and outscaling of site-specific nutrient management. So the most important challenge of present agriculture is to increase food production in the face of climate change with minimum environmental impact. The projection says that the feeding of the world population of about 9.6 billion would require rising the food production by about 70 percent between 2005 and 2050 and that needs to be doubled in the developing countries. This means the consumption of the inorganic fertilizer in agriculture is set to further rise in future. It should be noted, however, that the only fraction of the applied nutrient in the cropland ends off in the harvested product and, and the rest is lost into the atmosphere. If we see the nutrient use efficiency of various uh, region in the world, we can see that nutrient use efficiency in African region is much higher uh, indicating that there is soil mining going on, whereas that of China and India is quite low, indicating uh, improper fertilizer management in these regions. This figure also shows uh, the nutrient balance, nitrogen balances of the landscape in the agroecosystem in terms of kilogram per hectare. We can see here that in India, in China, and parts of Europe and USA, the actual amount of nitrogen applied in the field is actually higher than that is actually taken by the crops and the excess nitrogen is lost into the atmosphere by means of leaching or emission. So that leaching or emission would lead to the negative externalities and these negative externalities of fertilizer in agri-systems are mainly due to an appropriate source, inappropriate amount, uh, wrong uh, time of application or wrong method of application. It should, however, uh, be noted that there are ways to improve the nitrogen management, uh, nutrient management system in agroecosystem, and 4R nutrient stewardship is one of the innovative approaches for fertilizer-based management. So 4R stands for right source, right rate, right place, and right time. So it's all about applying right source of fertilizer in the right rate, in the right place in the field at the right time of the crop requirement which all are guided through the scientific principle and practical knowledge. So all source, rate, place, time are guided by its um, respective scientific principles and practical knowledge. So as an example, I'm presenting here how to um, uh, get the right rate of application. So right rate of application in the field is uh, based on the analysis of the plant demand minus all available nutrient from the system by means of crop residues or organic matters or deposition or fixation and then that can be done by uh, uh, calculating the nutrient balance in the system uh, so that the actual amount of the inorganic fertilizer to be applied in the system is calculated and same for place time and sources over here I'm not going in detail over here but this is how we uh, do the uh, four R nutrient management in agriculture system so there are various benefit various benefits of site specific nutrient management as climate smart practices and some of them I'm going to outline here so uh, site specific nutrient management increase or maintain the crop yield with less fertilizer input in high fertilizer use zone. Here is an example from India on uh, in wheat, uh, grain yield as well as fertilizer nitrogen input. The left figure is about grain yield and right figure is about fertilizer nitrogen input for rice and wheat. 
So you can see that there are two types of fertilizer management. This black is about uh, is farmers fertilizer practice, whereas this gray is site specific nutrient management. So we can see that uh, site specific nutrient management increase the grain yield both for rice and wheat with less nitrogen input in both the cases. So increase Increasing grain yield with less fertilizer management means it increases the farm income to the farmers. By increasing the agronomic efficiency of the nutrient, site-specific nutrient management also reduces the nutrient loss, including greenhouse gas emission, uh, mainly nitrous oxide emission. So here you can see uh, site-specific nutrient management by employing nutrient export and green seeker. I'll come uh, what nutrient. Ex I will explain uh, what nutrient export and green seeker are later on in my presentation but here global warming potential of this site specific nutrient management over here is much lower than that we obtain from the farmers fertilization practice over here under both uh, uh, in terms of both uh, per hectare as well as per unit of dollar uh, net return uh, here are the practices in agricultural practice, uh, agricultural system with technical mitigation potentials. And all I wanted to highlight is nutrient management has also tremendous uh, mitigation potential in India, in China, and to some extent also in European Union, United States, and uh, and Brazil over here. So uh, proper nutrient management is really important also from uh, reducing climate forcing. Uh, and these are uh, 62 countries which are blue shaded over here uh, that had included nutrient management or cropland management as mitigation strategy in their intended nationally uh, determined uh, commitment during COP21 Paris. There are various tools for implementing site specific nutrient management uh, and I'm giving example a few of them. One is uh, the optical sensor like Green Seeker over here which is handheld uh, sensor which which is uh, which helps in season nitrogen management based on the NDVI reading that gives the fertilizer recommendation based on uh, the reading that uh, that is obtained in this uh, handheld um, uh, equipment and there are various tools and softwares like Newton experts developed by International Plant Nutrition Institute and CEMATE crop manager developed by ERI uh, which uh, gives the nutrient recommendation for farmers based on what crops that they have grown before, under what management, what crop they are going to grow now, and what yield target they are going to have. And there are simple drilling machines like this, which also helps substantially to improve uh, the application method of uh, the fertilizer. And all of these substantially improves the nutrient use efficiency in agroecosystems. Uh, out, I'm uh, almost concluding my presentation and there are various barriers for the uptake of site-specific nutrient management. Uh, number one is farmers attitude that they believe that they can get higher yield by applying high nut higher nutrient in the field, which is not always correct. And farmers lack the proper data uh, keeping system in order for the economic analysis of site specific nutrient management. Uh, access to appropriate input and machineries are very poor, particularly in the developing countries. And farmers in developing countries also lack technical knowledge on the use of some of the tools and techniques of site specific nutrient management, which I already explained uh, above. And uh, various countries also have counterproductive policies that hampers uh, the uptake of site specific nutrient management. For example, the government of India provides subsidy on nitrogen, nitrogenous fertilizer, but not on potassium and phosphatic fertilizer that encourage farmers to apply more nitrogen fertilizer, leading to imbalanced fertilizer application in the field. There are also ways to upscale and outscale site specific nutrient management. Some of them are to target the policy uh, subsidy on fertilizer to the vulnerable communi uh, communities only. And private sectors should also be encouraged and involved in developing the appropriate products like neem coated urea in the case of uh, slow release fertilizer. 
and farmers need to have a increased access to the inputs and machineries for site specific nutrient management and there should be appropriate policy reform for example the government of india is bringing a policy of neem coated urea instead of normal urea which releases fertilizer slowly thus enhancing plant uptake and minimum loss to the environment thank you very much